So I got my hands on uh, Hakko FX100 and a JVC CD1VQF. Um, I believe the only difference between the CB1D and 2D is which uh, region it's targeted at. So really it's, it's the CD model. And they're both really high-end stations. I'll be comparing them to my Kzger, which is a fantastic name, K-S-G-E-R, um, which costs 60 bucks, uh, about a tenth of what either of these stations costs, uh, in Canadian dollars, that is. And quite frankly, uh, it's not to, to, you know, talk down about the Kzger, honestly, for small stuff. I, I'm not good enough to see the difference. Um, the thing is that issues I had once or twice a year with you know large grounding planes or big heat sinks were becoming a weekly problem as I was getting into higher power uh, products. Uh, so it was time to upgrade and I actually haven't tried the Hakko yet. I've had the JBC for almost a week and a half now so I kind of cheated and tried it before. Um, and I gotta say the Kisgar really it it really highlighted how good the Kisgar is uh, to be honest um, because anything below really tough situations I mean they both perform fabulously um, so if you're not looking for uh, you know, doing large grounding planes or large heat sinks like you have on you know these TO packages um, well, I mean, these are through holes, but I'm going to be using them as the example because I have them on hand. Um, the Kisgur is, is definitely a good place to start. Uh, and honestly, if you're not sure, then just spend the 60 bucks. And, you know, it, this is not a pay once, cry once thing. At 60 versus 600, it's a nice second tool to have uh, if you decide you really do need a higher end station. However, you, if you are at the point where that higher end station can come in handy, um, this is where we're at. So the differences between the two, this one is an inductive iron where the temperature is set by the, uh, the actual tip. So there's a color indicator and it tells you which temperature it's at. Um, I bought the largest tip I could for this, which is six and a half millimeter. And I bought the largest tip I could in the, in the, uh, spade tips for the JBC which is seven and a half millimeters with so 7.7 .7, um, and it's got a much bigger mass um, and the temperature I selected is actually 400 degrees uh, the reason is just that with these higher end irons I was hoping I don't need to go as high as I did on the Kisger where even at 450 Celsius I wasn't able to, to weld some of the to solder some of the points I needed um, so I'm going to be comparing these at 400 C, uh, just because this one is static. Um, that being said, uh, one of the advantages, obviously, of the JBC is that you, if you really did need to increase the temperature, you could. But I don't think that at that at this point it's going to be making much of a difference. So I'm just going to put them both at 400. That being said, the two irons being a different size might play into the performance, but it's a characteristic of of the platform you know if you choose the hackle you know that you're limited to a slightly smaller tip um, if you go to the JBC there's a higher variety that being said the JBC's are 30 bucks US a piece these are 20 bucks US per tip um, or actually sorry 20 bucks Canadian so 15 bucks US so there's a pretty substantial difference there but honestly if you're equipping yourself with two or three tips to get this you know half a grand station going you're not you're not going to regret it one way or another you should just get the few tips you need um, I'm getting four per station which is quite frankly overkill um, I've got a tiny one 1.2 millimeter that's usually as small as I do I don't do extra fine work and then a medium 2.4 millimeter which is my general use one and then I've got a giant one and then on both of them I decided to splurge and I got something fancy 
um, on the Hakko I got a, a fine tip so that I can do some really small surf surface mount stuff so just a conical tip and then on the JVC I got this really nifty you can't see it because there's solder on it but it's got a groove in it so you can go around pins when you solder them so it's kind of like a spade with a with a slough for the pin it goes really really fast I love it as far as build design before I even get into using them I've got to say the JBC hands down has the better ergonomics. Um, I like that you can kind of rip the uh, the tips out here on the station. You do have to hold it. Right now I am at arm's length. But the point is that you don't need that little silicone sleeve. I got the hackle used. Didn't have the little silicone sleeve. I can't hot swap my tips. Um, so, you know, that's just one more thing to lose. And uh, it's it's not a huge difference. but. It is a convenience factor if you if you only have one station, you're not doing dual irons, and you're going between big and small stuff, which is definitely my case where I'll have the grounding plane that needs a few small, and uh, a few big parts, and then you know everything else is pretty standard small stuff. So I do want to switch between my 2.4 and my in this case 7.7 .7 millimeter tip. The JBC, you know, even though it is adjustable, first thing I did is I set it to the mode where it's got three temperatures: 350, 400, 450. So, you know, the fact that the hackle you have to change tips to change temperature isn't that huge of a deal, really. I bought mostly 350s, except for the big one, because I do need it to be bigger. I went with a 400, uh, 400. And then the station, the seller was nice enough to send me a spare tip as a 450 2.4, uh, yeah, a 450 2.4 millimeter. So that's pretty hot. Um, not quite sure what I'll be using it for, but honestly, I used to run the Kisgur at 450 all the time because I had trouble with some of the bigger parts. Um, realistically, I should have been running it lower, so it'll be nice to be able to run at 350 with both of this, these machines and not have any problems. That might be a factor of, of skill too, though. Um, uh, you know, I'm by no means uh, uh, spectacularly skilled at this, so you know, maybe someone who's better than me can run the Kisgur at 250 Celsius for all I know. Uh, but I would honestly end up with gobs if I did that. Uh, probably doesn't help that I use lead free solder as well. As far as heat up time. I don't think it matters. Uh, the hackle doesn't tell you what temperature it's at, um, but it does heat up incredibly fast from just op turning it on and waiting to see how long the solder wait takes to melt. It seems to be almost twice as fast as the JBC. That being said, the JBC heats up in a few seconds, so it's pretty irrelevant at this point. It's between super fast and extra super fast. Realistically, you won't see the difference because just moving between two parts is long enough for the tip to heat up in either case. I do prefer the sponge with the hackle. Um, it, uh, I find it absorbs the water a bit better. I tend to end up with a puddle with the JBC one. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see the glare. Yeah, it, the, the, the hackle just came with a better sponge. Uh, that being said, that's not a very big factor. I personally don't really like using the sponge all that much. I prefer to use... Uh, the copper or brass wool and a tip dinner. The other thing is, uh, I thought this was kind of silly, the little antenna on the JBC right here. But actually, as soon as I took out the hackle and started setting it up, I was already getting tangled in this and I all of a sudden really appreciated that little antenna they have there on the JBC. Um, Fairly minor point, but you know, it, it is something. And then there's also the base is, I guess it takes it a little bit more space. Right now I'm set up on my, you know, big workbench, lots of space, but normally my electronics working station is quite a bit more cramped than this space. So I do appreciate the JBC for its form factor. I also do like the way they have a storage area for, oops, for the extra tips and four is honestly the perfect number. You don't really need much more than that because on top of that you can have one or two more, one more here. If you have two you're gonna be clogged up. So really it's set up for up to six at a time, no problem. So that's not very, that's not very uh, uh, worrisome at all. With the hackle you're looking at just kind of putting the tips in here and uh, letting them dangle around. Not the end of the world but again in a very cramped space where things kind of can get knocked around pretty easily. I do like the JBC for that. So for the test, I, I would have liked to do the grounding plane on my battery tester uh, I, I developed, 
but I'm all out of those. I shipped out my prototype to uh, um, to actually to a customer because he needed a replacement, and that was the last unit I had. Um, well, not my prototype, my testing unit that I keep. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't show that anymore. Uh, and it was a great example because it was a real life example where I just had header pins going through a grounding plane and the Kisger just, just couldn't keep up with it. It would just glob all over the place and it just wasn't able to, to sink enough heat in it. Um, whereas, you know, now I have to do this kind of semi-artificial test. So the test is to use these little two ounce PCBs, uh, two ounce on each side. And then there's pretty good contact between the two. It's not the best, but there is some. Um, so at least two ounce on one side. And then there's a little heat sink on the back of these TO modules, um, these FETs. And uh, uh, the Kisger failed miserably at soldering them. Uh, the reason I thought of doing this is actually because one of my uh, d designs actually uses this behemoth of a diode. And the Kisger was just completely unable to solder it onto my board. And I ma did manage to do it with the JBC. So, you know, this is a pretty representative test of real real world situation. The only reason I'm not using these diodes is they cost $6 a piece and these uh, are junk. So we're going to go with the junk. And there you go. So I said I don't use the sponge, but I guess that was a lie. So we'll clean this up, tin it, and I'm just going to go up here. I'm working behind the camera so it's a little hard. So it had absolutely no problem. Um, you know, this is properly soldered. This is not a cold joint. It's burning my fingers. I should wait. There you go. But it is it is a really good soldered joint. Um, ah, I'm pulling. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Let's try with the hackle. And already the you know thing dragging on the ground is Okay, so I think I had a little bit more trouble there. Let's try it again. Might have just been hand placement. Okay. Try again with the ABC. Yeah, so the JBC is definitely doing a much better job, actually. I'm, I'm really surprised. The Hacko is definitely doing a good job. Um, 
but the JBC is doing it what I would consider you know flawlessly for something I'm doing at the oh no wow I spoke too soon so first cold joint so it did heat up the let's test them all okay so I managed to rip this one off So it's a tie. You know, I was trying to do these quick because uh, the idea was to kind of test, you know, their performance. Um, realistically, they can both do it. Um, I do prefer the JBC as far as, as the finish. I found that it flowed better, so it was sinking a bit more heat is my guess. Um, I didn't have my flare set up for this, but they both gave me a cold joint on the uh, on one of them where at the end I was trying to really do it as, as fast as possible uh, to be fair I stayed almost nine seconds with the Hakko only about what was it like four seconds with the JBC I'm gonna try to touch them up I can smell burning. So, just to put them side by side. So they can both burn my fingers. I do prefer the finish on the JBC. This is, you know, working at arm's length um, behind a camera, not being particularly careful, just trying to see if I can, if the tool can replace skill, essentially. You know, um, the tool doesn't make the job, the skill does, to be honest. That being said, better tools can reduce the barrier to your skill level I feel like uh, in the hands of my you know a few electronic engineer friends the Hakko would perform flawlessly um, because I've seen them do way better solder points than me with uh, you know the same equipment uh, so there is definitely a huge skill element in in soldering that being said JBC seems to be the winner here it, it did allow me to do this tougher joint easier, which is the point of buying this tool. Um, you know, the simple stuff, uh, no question, they can both do it. But when it comes to the super heavy duty, JBC wins. It's also got the higher um, options of, uh, a higher number of, of, of tip options. They are pretty expensive, but the difference in price, the station is a bit cheaper. You can buy a few more tips with the price difference, especially in Canada. Uh, this unit is almost an extra $200 in Canada for some reason, you know, part of why I ordered it from the States. Uh, but all things considered, JBC wins.